So a block of mass, 8 kilograms, is pulled upwards along a rough plane. This rough plane indicates that there is some kind of friction going on there. This is inclined at 30 degrees by a force of 95 newtons. The coefficient of friction of the force between the block and the inclined plane is 0.4. The first thing we need to do is draw a fully labeled diagram to illustrate all the forces acting on the block. The first thing I'll work on is drawing the incline. So let's say that this here is ground level. And remember we have an incline 30 degrees. So now we have the block. We need to identify the forces acting on this block. All of the forces. We look at them from a perspective of x-axis and coming along a y-axis. Because the block is on an incline, I'm going to look at this line here as if it was the x-axis. So in other words, if I put a little key for us to understand here, the forces going this way would be considered the x-axis and the forces going this way can be considered the y-axis. Now it is important to know that the reason why I have the x-axis slanted and the y-axis slanted is because this this entire inclination is slanted. So I'm trying to get an effect of a y and x axis relative to this incline. You expect to see x axis going along this way and my y axis going perpendicular to this. So this is why I have my axis slanted like this. The first obvious one we have is a force of 95 newtons is pulling it at the incline at 30 degrees. So that means that the force going up this way is 95 newtons. Now the next one that we have going along in the x direction, meaning like this slanted here, x direction, the most obvious one, is friction. How do I know there is friction? Well, two things. They said it has a rough plane, one. They gave us a coefficient of friction. They didn't tell us what the friction was, but they gave us a coefficient of friction, which implies that there is friction. Friction will always go against the direction of motion. So this block is going up the hill, so our friction will be going down the hill. It would be opposing this upward motion that we have here. So right here we have the frictional force. So we do not know what friction is, so we will just say that here is friction. So I'm illustrating that friction is acting on this even though I do not have a value of friction. However, I can note that a coefficient of friction is 0.4. The only other force acting upon this that we were given would be, would be the one affected by gravity. And we would need a mass to do that. So as you can see here, we have the mass of 8 kilograms. So with this mass 8 kilograms, I could determine what the force as a result of gravity is. And for this unit, we always use gravity to be 10 meters per second squared. And as we know, force is equal to mass times acceleration. We have mass here of 8 and the acceleration due to gravity is 10. So 8 times 10, we expect the force as a result of gravity to be 80 newtons. The force as a result of gravity would always pull the object directly to the ground. So in this case, if I was to apply this, I'm going to use a different color because it's not going along the x-axis or the y-axis. So you see, it's acting towards the ground here. So this full line that we have here would be 80 newtons acting straight down. Now, this line is not lined up with the x-axis or the y-axis. So just imagine if I apply the y-axis here and the x-axis here from this template, you realize that this frictional force is going this way on the x-axis. This 95 is also along the x-axis, but the green, as you can see, does not go along the x-axis or the y-axis. So what we need to do is determine a y component as well as an x component that basically results to this 80. So extending this y axis to figure out how we got from this point here to this point here, I'll come along the y axis and I'll stop here. In order to go to this point now, we are taking over through the x axis. So then now we would have the x axis moving along here to reach to this point here. So the y axis came down here x-axis came to here okay and then we will know that because this was inclined at 30 our angle inside here is also 30 degrees so if you're looking at this triangle i need to split this triangle now into two components you know that in here is a 90 degree angle so this blue line represents the x component of this 80 newton force which we will have to find for the next question 
and this line represents the y component of the 80 newton force that is affecting the block as a result of gravity now there's one more force acting on this block so we know that for any action there's an equal and opposing reaction so that means that there's a normal force that this block is experiencing as well which would go along in the y direction perpendicular to the surface this here is the normal okay and remember the normal is perpendicular to the surface and this is our surface right here we have all the forces now that are affecting this block now we can try to calculate the acceleration of the block now as it relates to acceleration we are talking about acceleration along the direction of the resultant force so when we say resultant force another way of saying resultant force is a net force so it has to be the net forces so we have two forces we have the forces acting in the y direction and the forces acting in the x direction but in this case the forces in the x direction is where all the movement is happening the movement is happening along the surface so as a result we are interested in figuring out what is the acceleration along the surface so in the x direction we would expect that the sum of the forces are the net force the sum of the forces so the sum of the forces in the x direction would be equal to mass times acceleration now this mass times acceleration is the net force so if we could figure out all the sum of the forces going in the x direction and equate it to mass times acceleration we should be able to figure out what the acceleration is i'll put it in light blue just like the forces that we have in the x direction here we have the 95 newtons we have friction that we do not have but we do have the coefficient of friction and we also have this x component right here of the 18 newton force as a result of gravity so we need to figure out what the sum of these forces are ma is equal to i'm gonna choose going up this way as positive because this is my direction that i'm actually moving up and i'll do minus anything opposing this direction so in this case i would say that 95 is positive so we have 95 and because this frictional force is opposing the direction that i'm going in we're gonna say i have to minus friction so the next thing is this particular component so this is the x component of the force due to gravity so i could refer to 80 newtons as the weight if 80 newtons is the weight that must mean that this value is the x component of the weight and since this is going in a negative direction i'll have minus w x so once we could figure out the friction and the weight in the x direction we would be able to figure out what a is because we already have m so we did the sum of the forces in the x direction let's look at the forces in the y direction maybe we would have some stuff from here that would allow us to be able to calculate some stuff in here as well so the sum of the forces in the y direction is also equal to the mass times the acceleration which would be the net force along the y axis but because we are not moving in that direction we're just moving along the x axis that must mean that there is no acceleration occurring along the y plane therefore that must means that the sum of the forces in the y direction would be equal to zero for this one we can say upward forces are positive and we would say the downward forces in this case negative we have one force going upwards and one force going downwards now this downwards force here is the weight of the y component when i say weight i mean the effect of the force as a result of gravity so if you're going upwards and this is equal to zero we could say that zero is equal to the normal force and since the force due to gravity in the y direction is going downwards here relative to the y-axis we would say that that is negative so we would have to subtract that from this so therefore if I try to solve, I would end up saying that the normal force N is equal to WY. Once I add WY to both sides, I'll end up with N is equal to WY. So WY and WX, we need to figure out what these two components are in order to work out what this value is here and what this WX value is here. This boils down to trigonometry. All right, so as you can see, we are focusing on this here right now where you realize this this is a right angle triangle so in other words i can refer to 80 newtons as the hypotenuse 
Now relative to this angle here is 30, we have Wx. So the length opposite the angle that we are focusing on is the opposite. So this here is the opposite. So therefore that means this here is the adjacent. So I want to calculate what Wx is, or in other words, the opposite first. I have a length here, h, which is a hypotenuse. And when we are thinking of a right angle triangle, we can use the sine, cosine, tan angle ratio. So from Sokator, we have the hypotenuse and we are trying to find the opposite. If we have O and H now, so that means we are looking for O but we have H. So along here we just look for the combination of O and H. So we have O and H here for sine. Therefore, sine is what we will use to find the value of O here. So we know that sine theta, so in this case 30, would be equal to the opposite. So Wx is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse here is 80. Any number as a fraction is itself over 1. So we have sine theta over 1 is equal to Wx over 80. So the next thing we need to do is cross multiply. So we say 80 times sine theta is equal to Wx times 1. 80 times sine theta would give us 40. And Wx times 1 is Wx. Therefore, Wx is equal to 40 newtons. So we could update that in our diagram. All right, so the next thing we want to find is WY. So this represents the adjacent, and we also have the hypotenuse and the opposite now. But I'll just use the hypotenuse just because it was the number that we were given, which was 80. So we're looking for something in the sine, cosine, tan ratio that has H and A, because this allows us to find whichever one is missing. So in this case, when we look at A and H, we have cosine. So therefore, we could say cosine 30 is equal to adjacent, which is wy, over hypotenuse, which is 80. Now we could put this over 1 like we did earlier and cross multiply. 80 times cosine 30 is equal to wy times 1. So 80 times cosine 30, 69.28 is equal to wy. So therefore, wy is equal to 69.28 newtons. After these calculations, we can now say we have the value of the x component and the y component as a result of the force due to gravity on this block. So one thing we should note is that we have here from our earlier calculations of the sum of forces in the y direction that wy is equal to newtons. wy is equal to the normal. So we can also say that the normal here is 69.28. We now have a value for Wx as well, but we're still missing the one for friction. So friction is equal to the coefficient of friction multiplied by the normal. So in this case, we know that the coefficient of friction is 0 0.4. Therefore, we can say 0 0.4 multiplied by the normal. We just worked out the normal, which is 69.28. So 0 0.4 times 69.28, which gives us the value of friction. So this gives us 27.71 newton. So we now have the friction and we also know what the mass is already. Substitute for friction and substitute for Wx. So we will have now mass which is 8 kilograms. So 8a is equal to 95. The force going upwards in the x direction. So we have 95 and it's positive. Then we have minus friction, which is 27.71 newtons, which is opposing the motion of the block. We also have this force here. This is one that you need to be careful with when you're preparing for exam. These two components here usually are the ones that get people in trouble. Ensure that if you have a question like this, you work this out first and break it down so you can have a clear understanding of what the forces are acting in each unique x and y direction. Okay, so this force here, we can't forget, notice they're all in blue, the forces going along the x and their corresponding calculations in blue. Therefore, we could say that the force as a result of gravity in the x direction, which is also pulling towards the ground, because remember, it is going towards the ground, is going in a negative direction, so we end up having minus 40. So 8a is equal to 95 take away 27.71 take away 40. So 8a is equal to 27.29. In order to get a by itself, I need to divide both sides by 8. Therefore, our acceleration, 3.41 meters per second squared. That's our answer for this.